Miggy is apparently trying to stay oh. in this game. <laughs> stay <laughs> well, away from those umpires. Yeah, we'll remind you, he was ejected in the first inning the other day in Minnesota, uh, arguing balls and strikes. So Brandon Dixon had to come in to replace him. That was in the second game of that double dip on Saturday. Here's the 2 2 to Diaz. Off speed, just missed. And this is what happened Saturday. He didn't like that strike call. All right. And he let the home plate umpire know about it. Said something afterwards. He probably said, I want that guy to get that same pitch, right? Yeah. And then what happened is Marwin Gonzalez, that same pitch, according to Cabrera, was not called on Marwin Gonzalez. And that's when Cabrera started to lose it. And that's when he was ejected by Chad Whitson. And Ron Gardenhire was too late to save him. One and two. In the dirt again, two balls, two strikes. There goes the throw to second base, and it stays on the infield. Sanchez is into second. So now a base hit could give the Sox the lead. And they're going to bring on the ground screw again. Unreal. Wow. Well, look, it's, it's pouring like crazy, and it kind of begs the question. I know you don't want to give outs, but. Maybe swinging at that last pitch or two. Suddenly the inning's over, a different scenario. Now, with two outs in the inning, and, and the over swimming back to his position, which is at this point on the bench. Good for Yomer. Have some fun with it. 1 1 in the fifth inning. And here comes the tarp again. Here goes Yomer. Now if this ball ended up in center field you never know where he would have ended up. And here it's called Yolmer says well forget about this I'm going to go have some fun. <laughs> A drenching rain. And Yolmer just needs a shower after getting all that dirt on him so he's just going to naturally let this happen we've come this far to go nowhere Yomer Jacks look at him rile up the crowd <laughs> <laughs> oh, <he's gonna> <laughs> <laughs> there you go never a dull nor a dry moment with Yomer why not That deserves a replay or two. <laughs> Not enough water out here. Yalmer Falls. A great place to take a vacation. <laughs> Sanchez breaks down the castle wall and the Sox win two to one. What will Yalmer do? Socks. Yomer drove in two of them here this afternoon, and that's all the Sox needed was two. So Yomer with his base hit in the fifth inning, that's the one that kept us here because that tied the ball game before the game was suspended. And now he ends it with a base hit right back up the middle. Ozzie Timmons prepares to the raise a uh, Full accounting of the push-ups for the six runs in the bottom of the third. He's going to be able to bench press 300 pounds after this season. There's no question. <laughs> he is getting after it. And look at the focus. Don't worry about the seeds and the bag of balls on the back. <laughs> you just want to add weight. <laughs> And uh, 50 more push ups from uh, Ozzy Timmons coming right up. Yeah, here's the deal. Ozzy's going to start out strong, right? He's going to go in there. Oh, no big deal. You know, I want to know about the last five reps. That's where he's going to need a spotter. <laughs> because, I mean, he's going to be exhausted after this game. Eddie Rosario leading off a strike to count on him. A big cut and a miss on the fastball. Well, this continues to be impressive by Ozzy Timmons. Yeah, it does. He's, he's going to be a new jersey. sort of guy anyway. Yeah, he's going to be busting out of that jersey with all the muscles, man. 
Now who's counting for him? I want to know who's counting. I want to know. I want to make sure it's a legitimate count. Fly ball into center. Here's Heredia making the grab. So one out in the fifth. Alzi Timmons completes the task. Not even phased. Here's that last strikeout, and Whit Merrifield did not like the call, thinking the ball was in the dirt. And oh, yeah. Ned comes out to argue. And then, of course, they had to pause because they were getting ready to play and sing God Bless America. All right, let's put our differences aside. Let's listen to the song. <laughs> the guy singing in the background. And they're still chatting about it. You know, there's a fine line. There really is. <laughs> there's Blake Snell. <laughs> Left handers. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> How long can he hold it? Blink, please. <laughs> the 2 2 to Zanino is in tight. <laughs> He goes, look at the game. Stop with me. <laughs> Mike Barron's good job. Look at him. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Knocked down by Walker and Kelly is right there. Rowdy Telez is retired. Hit hard, but right to the first baseman. Uh oh. Somebody got it. Got him with the oh, bubble gum bubble. <laughs> and he's going to wear it until somebody tells him. Uh, Alex Avila, he's the culprit. He's been around a long time. He's got the stripes to pull that off. <laughs> okay. Don't wear your hat if you're sitting in the front row, right? And sends a toe off, bunts that one. It's caught, and that's an out. Would have been an out anyway, but Alonzo with the extra effort and sends a toe as retired. Look at Jake. Jake's looking at Alonzo like I you realize he just took a strikeout. Cost away. me a strikeout. Let's go. Know the rules of the game. Come on. He is irrepressible, <laughs> and he wouldn't want to take that away that's from him. That's so true. And I think Jake was uh, definitely saying it to him tongue in cheek. Just having some fun. <laughs> Look at yeah. He said strike out there. You just took away a strike out, <laughs> man. On behalf of the t entire team, Rangers shortstop Elvis Andrews is out onto the field. <laughs> to present Adrian with a very special Custom made robe designed by Rangers reliever Jesse Chavez. Addison Russell picking up a baseball after losing a bat in the last half inning. But who was the lucky finder? It hit the net. Jock Peterson took it and off he went. <laughs> Chucks it back. Taped up Alex Verdugo's hands. Who's a non starter? It's a good thing Alex isn't starting today because it's going to take a little while to cut that <laughs> tape off. And I'm sure Addison <laughs> saw it. And I'm also sure they're friends because that's not something you do to a guy that you don't know. It's amazing what kind of humor you have when you're in first place and you have a lead by almost 10 games. Uh, it's a fun place to come. 
Beautiful stadium, 45, 50,000 people every night. Uh, it's fun to see the Dodgers uh, having so much fun. Look at that. And you saw Chris Bryant, he gone. I don't blame him. Tyler Malley in the Red Legs, donning the uniforms of 1956. Some of the players are wearing the long sleeves underneath, and then those with the big guns, i.e. Dietrich, Lorenzen. How about that? You got guns like that, you, you should show them off. Rendon gets his hands inside that one, and Adam Eaton is speeding to third. Rendon to second, Eaton coming home. He is safe, and the Nats take the lead on a daring base running play after a line drive Rendon double. That's the biggest reaction I've seen from Bob Henley at third all year, and when he sent him, I said, oh, no. Aggressive move by the Nats third base coach. Great swing by Tony Two Bags. He looked hitterish this whole sequence. Adam Eaton saw it was in the gap right away, so he had a good read. But right here when Alex Gordon cut it off, I thought they might stop him. But watch Bob Henley. Super aggressive with one out and one Soto coming up. There was so much celebration going on. What's Max Scherzer doing out there? He's way out of the dugout. I love it. Did he think it was the ninth inning? I mean, this is one of my favorite moments of the year. The hit, the slide at home, Max, game's over. Where's the bucket? Hey, you're winning, those things are hilarious. And that's what Kangaroo Court is for. Hey, like I said, he's into it. Well, you might say the way the Nats starters are pitching, it's an eight inning game. And he's thinking right, too. You know, you never get anything on Max Scherzer. It's probably the first time in <laughs> five years they have anything on him. It might be my favorite moment of the year. As messed up as that is. Uh, when you're winning, those things are just they're the best. Because the to say, he's like, we looked around, you were gone. Where'd you go? It's the eighth inning. Only one way to speed up the game. <laughs> oh, good times at the yard. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. That's the way Chris Welsh does it every single morning. Uh, I take the little the, those black round things off though. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah. Hey, that's a perfect way to do it. Man, old oh man. We got the old bubble gum on the top of the hat routine going on. Unbeknownst to Dietrich. That never gets old, does it? Yeah, but is it the rookie that did it to him, though? Because that's, that's, no, oh, it's got to be that guy. <laughs> oh, I just noticed. <laughs> I, I think it was, oh, here we go. Even Freddie Benavidez. Oh, he's going to investigate. <laughs> he is. Find out. There's going to be a did it. serious investigation going on. Retribution. On the fielder's choice with two down, Yasiel Puig to the plate. Puig batting 370 as a member of the Cleveland Indians. Riding an eight game hitting streak. <laughs> he went into a crouch and still in there for a strike. Matt Arch, the Did little, league, the World little league guy last the little, night. Yes, he's going to the Little League World Series guy. <laughs> oh, man. Does so with an yes. exclamation point. My oh, look goodness. At, look at all the great Kimbrell impersonations. That was awesome. The pinch hitter here is Cole Tucker. Behind home plate. What team is that? They're all standing behind home plate. Those are the Jersey kids. 
Well, the Jersey kids, but when you see Craig Kimbrell, his point of view, like so behind the batter, the team in orange, they're all standing up doing his, when he gets in his stance. Watching Kimbrell, and that's his view. That's all he sees is like nine of him. <laughs> so great. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, look out. And that hit Tucker. So Homer hit batsman for Craig Kimbrell. Oh, I mean, this is like being at the free throw line and having a bunch of people <laughs> mocking you. That, it takes concentration. And here's Brian Reynolds now. They need help in the bullpen. Buster mentioned earlier getting Steve Seashack back is huge as well. But if they're not back to what, where they need them to be, it's a bad sign. And you're inside six weeks, Jess. This is the time that you want to start refining everything, getting fine-tuned for the October run. Now, that's a great pitch right there. Is awesome. <laughs> the only thing that would have been better is if he had it in his back pocket and he pulled it out of the pocket and went around the bases with an umbrella. There, there it goes. Fielder will watch it fly. And that's your ball game. Prince Fielder with a walk off home run. And the Brewers win a thrill of the day. Two to one. The final score, number 37 for Prince.